All right. Well, good morning, Abundant Life. As you can tell, it's uh, family service here, and we're going to have an incredible time today. We're going to talk a little bit about faith this morning. Right before uh, we do, Carla, you guys can go ahead and, and get ready up here. We've been talking about faith and Kid Zone for the last um, three weeks or so, and so we got a little exercise this morning to help us illustrate that. Um, before we actually get into that, um, Dana, can you come up here, and you and Gabby... Oh, no, not you. My, my wife, Gabby. <laughs> my daughter, Gabby. I'm sorry. <laughs> Gabriella, you were being so obedient, though. That was incredible. All right. So we, we actually, I actually invited um, my wife and Gabby. As many of you guys know, when we first got to this church, um, Gabby was actually in my arms. She was a little bitty, little bitty baby, right? You remember that, Gabby? You're kind of, okay. She don't, she don't remember that. Okay. But um, anyway, um, we actually just have a quick announcement. We're going to be expecting our second child here coming up. You want to say something? You want to say? You want to say you're expecting a big sister? Okay. I just have to ask her one question. Is it, is it going to be a boy or do you think it's going to be a girl? Boy. It's a boy. Okay. Hey. <laughs> Yeah, we don't know, but that's what she's hoping for. But it, I just wanted to bring them up real quick. Can we give them a hand clap? <clears throat> All, right. No. All right. Well, once again, we've been talking about faith, and we're going to continue talking about faith this morning. I actually have uh, a couple students here from Kid Zone, and I encourage you to ask your students what they're learning in the back. It's always something um, um, incredible. The last three weeks, once again, I've been teaching about faith, and we've been actually building on it. So we first, we gave a one definition, a one word definition of faith, and we said it's to believe. It's believe, right? And then we built upon that, and we said it's not only to believe, but it's to believe in God. Not only is it uh, believing in God, but it's also believing in God when you don't see it actually happening, okay? So we're going to have a little exercise this morning, and uh, Jacob, all right. Do you trust me, Jacob? Why do he have those shifty eyes like, that's your dad all the way. I'm telling you, that's your dad. All right, here we go. So you trust me, okay? Um, everything's going to work out this morning, I promise you, okay? Let, let me ask you guys this question. There's a couple questions I have to ask you guys before we get started. Um, and here it is. Uh, you guys can swim, right? Can you swim a little bit? Okay, well, hold on a second. Are you scared of water? Sometimes in the bathtub? Okay, but you're used to water because you have to take baths, right? Okay, all right. Jacob, right? Okay, cool. All right, here we go. Oh, well, I actually have some things up here. This is, everybody knows what this is. This is a lighter. And, and first of all, kids, if you guys are watching this, do not do this at home, okay? Your parents only have to do this, okay? So I also have a balloon up here, and it's just a regular balloon. You know, okay. Well, I, I want to see. I, we're going to do a little bit experiment this morning. So I want to see actually what happens if I actually put fire on this balloon. Okay. And of course, and just to just to have a little bit of fun, guess what we're going to do? We're going to put it above your head. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. All right. So you ready? Here we go. Let's see. Okay. It pops. All right. All right. Now. Yeah, yeah, we do, we do it on this side, too, so we just make sure. We're going to do this one more time. All right, all right. Now, now we're going to take it a little, a, little bit, a little bit further this morning. All right, we're going to try this with the water balloon, okay? And, and, and let me see this by a show of hands. How many people want to see me do it with water balloons this morning? Okay, awesome. You know, you know what's kind of scary is a lot of adults' hands went up, okay? I, I, I was expecting kids' hands to go up, but it's okay. All right, here we go. So we got, we got, Jacob, you ready? You guys ready? Now, I promised you that nothing was going to happen to you. And before, you remember, you said you trusted me, right? Yes. You still trust me? I'll try. Uh, you'll try. <laughs> okay, so it changed a little bit. I love you being honest. So, okay, here we go. So we're going to try this. Oh. All right. Did you bring more clothes? Yeah, did you bring? It's not going to hurt your hair, is it? No, it's not going to mess up your hair. Okay. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Here we go. No, it's turning. It's turning. It looks like it's getting burnt, but nothing's happening. Man. 
Okay, let's do this. Let's try. Let's try it over here, cause. All right, Avery. All right, Avery. Here we go. All right, Avery. Guess what? If it if it busts, it's like getting a free shower, right? You don't like water? Okay, here we go. Let's try it. Let's try it one more time. Jacob, can, Jacob, can you see what's happening here? Is it? Wow, somebody really wants to see somebody get wet. All right, I guess it didn't work. I guess you guys are actually safe this morning. Hey, listen, th thank you guys. Thank you guys for having faith in me this morning, okay? All right, next week we'll do it again, but we'll use uh, uh, more ingredients, okay? Next week, okay? Yeah, all right. All right, you guys can go. Let's give them a good hand clap as they go. All right. So we're going to be talking, we're going to be talking about faith this morning. And the, titles of, of, the title of today's message is Do Something Big. Do Something Big. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures and then we'll get started. Matthew 14, 13 through 21. Do something big. Verse 13. Really pay attention to this first part. It says, when Jesus heard it, when Jesus heard it, he departed from there by boat to a deserted place by himself. But when he heard the, when the multitudes heard it, they followed him. When the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude and he was moved with compassion for them and he healed them of their sickness. When it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a deserted place and the hour is late. Send the multitudes away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves some food. But Jesus said unto them, they do not need food. They do not need to go away. You need to give them something to eat. And they said to him, we, we have here only five loaves and two fish. Verse 18, he said, bring them to me. Then he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fish and looking into heaven, he blessed it, broke it and gave the loaves to the disciples. And the disciples gave to the multitudes. So they all ate and were filled, and they took up 12 baskets full of fragments that still remain. 2 Corinthians 4, 17 through 18, For our light affliction, which is not for a moment, is working for us far more exceeding an eternal weight of, of glory. While we do not look at things which are seen, but at things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are seen are are eternal. Second Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Pray with me this morning. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for everything you've given and done for us this morning. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for your word. I pray that you give us ears to hear, and I pray that our hearts are open to what you have to say to us. In Jesus' name, everyone say it. All right, as we, as we take a look at this uh, scripture, and we were just actually um, looking at what faith plays in our life. There's, some, there's a few things that we actually need to keep in mind. In the scripture, um, I read it really slowly. It said when Jesus heard it and also uh, when they actually, when the multitude actually heard it. There's something very important with being able to hear from God. And so as we look at this, we can see that the disciples had been walking with Jesus um, a very long time. Um, the four gospels actually says that or actually um, records 37 miracles of Jesus. In the New Testament, three words um, describe miracles. Power, um, um, sign, um, that refers to something else to come, and three, wonder, which indicates something extraordinary. Um, this morning, guys, I believe that God wants to do something extraordinary in our life. Okay? He cares so much about us. He loves us so much that he does not he doesn't just want us to go through life being dry, being upset and and not having um and not having a life that's that's incredible, okay? So God did these things to actually show the disciples um what type of life they actually should live. 
God wants us to live a life that's exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever ask or think. He wants to do big things in our lives. He wants to do big things in our life. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, this morning. Can you imagine being in the disciples' shoes where you actually got to see the incredibleness of God and what he did? Okay, I think sometimes, sometimes I bet you the disciples, after seeing those things over and over and over again, I think sometimes they kind of got a little, a little not, 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 um, they kind of got bored or they kind of got used to seeing God do miraculous things. Okay, I want you to think about, I want you to think about this. Okay, the first time, you know, if you, if you have children this morning, the first time you see your child walk was incredible. Right. You were excited about it. It was your first child. You see them walk. OK, fa- let's fast forward. After seeing them walk after 10 and 15 years and they're 22 now and they're walking, you're not going to get amazed by them actually walking. Right. You're, you're not. OK. And so it, it, I think it's human nature sometimes to after you've seen God work and move so many times and you've seen him move in a way that you're used to seeing him move before, you can kind of get accustomed to that. Basically, sometimes you can actually even expect that to actually happen. But guys, it's my understanding that God does not just want us want us to, to, to live life that way, but he, want us to, he wants us to have faith so that we can see greater things over and over and over again in our lives. Okay? So God wants to do big things in our lives. Okay? I want you to say that with me. Say, God wants to do big things in my life. Now, guys, big things just do not happen, okay? You just can't wake up and and expect big things to happen. If you are having faith and and you're putting your belief and trust in God, you are going to have to actually do something. There are some things that you can actually do that will help that process go along. So I want you to think about this. You're in the disciples' shoes and you're seeing them do this over and over and over again. I think sometimes the disciples, they're just like, oh, that's Jesus. He's just healing somebody. Oh, that's Jesus. He's just taking, uh, you know, a little kid's lunch and feeding the multitudes. Oh, that's just Jesus, you know, you know healing somebody else. Somebody was dead. Jesus just, just healed him again. And so, and so you got to understand what mindset. And I think sometimes in our own life, we can have that same mindset where we've seen God do so many incredible things in our life before that we're just like looking and waiting and expecting like, like okay, God, you, you did that. You did that. You did that before, and now I see it again, and I, I know you can do it. But how many of you guys know that, like I said, God wants to do things that will blow your mind? I want to give you another example this morning. When you guys actually first got saved, first got saved and you gave your heart to Jesus, and I remember for me, it was like my eyes were completely open. Like I seen things as though they really were, like for the first time in my life, and it blew me away, okay? And I believe that, that God wants to do those things, not just one time, but the song was actually saying it this morning. I believe that God can do incredible things. And if he did it once, he can actually do it again. But the, the, the incredible thing about God is he will not only just do it again, but he would do it again in a way that makes, the, makes, makes what happened before look small. Because God does things And he increases, it talks about his exceeding greatness. That's what it's talking about, his exceeding greatness, okay? He wants to blow your mind. He wants to do things greater than he did before. It's human nature to kind of be lulled to sleep after seeing incredible things happening over and over again. But I I want to take you, I want to take you, I want to give you three things this morning. And the message is do something big, and the big it's an acronym, so we're going to take a look at it. The B actually stands for believe. Believe. Now, we just had the three students up here, our two students actually up here. And, you know, I asked them, I said, do you trust me? And I told them, like, hey, nothing's going to happen to you at the beginning. I told them that. And afterwards, now, you know, uh, especially Jacob. Jacob was really cool. He's like, okay, cool. You know, I got this. I got this. Uh, now, it was a little bit different story. Once we put the the first balloon over his head and there was nothing. He was like, okay, you know, come on, let's do it. And then it was the balloon filled with water. And I said, I asked him, I said, Jacob, do you still trust me? He said, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, he had a little hesitation there. 
I want to guys let you know, guys, that sometimes God will speak to us. God will show us some things in our life. And, it, and it's, it, he will give us a glimpse of what's to come. And, and, and if we look at the de- definition of, of faith, faith is believing. Not only believing, but it's believing without seeing. And sometimes, and the better, the better definition of, for us today is like, God will tell us something, we'll believe it, and then the problem comes when what God says does not line up to what we actually see. That's, that's where doubt actually comes in. And if you guys remember this, you remember Peter, we talked about this last week in Kizom. Peter stepped out of the boat. He seen Jesus, he stepped out of the boat. And he said, you know what, you know, I'm going to step out in faith. And, and Peter stepped out in faith. And, and the Bible says it's incredible. He started walking on water. He was walking on water. And then we know the story. He sinks and he cries out, Lord, help me. And Jesus has to pick him up. And why is he picking him up? Jesus looks at him and says, ye of little faith. Like, why did you actually start to doubt? Jesus had said he could do it. He told him to come out there. But yet, he was walking on water, and he stopped, he, he, he let doubt come into his heart. And I think if we're not careful, we can allow doubt to come into our heart. And God will tell us something, and it'll be, it'll be crystal clear. And we'll say, okay, God, I got it. I know I'm supposed to do this. I know uh, this situation is going to work out. I know this, is, this, is gonna, this piece is actually going to fit there. And, we're, and then all of a sudden, you know, a month or later, or sometimes even a day later, We'll feel as if like, man, was that really God talking to me or did I just have too much pizza last night? Was was that really God? But, you know, you know what's so incredible about God? Not only will he do it again, but God will speak again, too. He will speak again. He told them, be very strong and courageous. He said, he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And he said it over and over and over again. How many of you guys know that God is not a God of just a second chance, but he's a God of another chance? And he's so gracious that he, when he speaks and we get it sometimes and, and, and we're doubting God, God will speak again. He'll speak again. So we have to believe. Matthew 14, 29 through 31 says, so he said, come. And Peter had come down out of the boat. and He walked on water. But when he saw that the wind was getting crazy, boisterous, he said he was afraid and beginning to sink and cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched his hand and caught him and said to him, oh, ye of little faith, why did you doubt? If God says something to you, you have to you have to remember what he says to you. And guys, I'm not talking about just things one day from another. God, there are things there's things that God has spoken to you. There's things that God has said to me that are yet to come to pass. And I'm talking about years, okay? And, and what, what will sustain us from when he spoke to us until whatever he said comes to pass? You know what will? Us keeping our faith. Keeping our faith and not doubting. And guess what? There's nothing wrong with that. Going every, going every time, saying things. We do this in kids on all the time. It's a proven fact. If you say something over and over and over and over and over and over again, guess what? It will sink in. It will sink in. That's why we do that. It's like three weeks in a row we're talking about faith. Why are we talking about faith? Because we're building blocks. I want you to get the first block and then the second block and then the second block. And, 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 and sometimes in our life, you know what we need to do? If we're doubting and, and if we're wondering what's really going on, we're going to have to keep on going back to God so he can get it right back in our head. Yes, I said it. Yes, I said it. And like I said, God is so gracious that he would do it over and over and over again. The second part of God doing something big in our life is we have to incline our ear. We actually have to listen. Do you understand that, that God wants to speak to us more than, than we want to actually listen? Are we actually available to listen to God? Do we make ourselves available to listen to what he actually has to say to us? Because let me tell you guys this. God is speaking all the time. Are we listening? Are we listening? So we have to incline our ear 
to what he has to say. Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You can't go by what you see because if you go by what you see, it'll mess you up. God will talk to you and say, this, this is how this works sometimes. God will say, I'm just going to use a little silly example here. But God will say, you are going to lose 20 pounds in a week. And this is just a silly example, guys. You're going to lose 20 pounds in a week. And let me tell you what happens. The very next day, you're driving to work. And Krispy Kreme has that sign that's lit up. I know some of you guys understand what that sign is. It says hot and fresh. And then you're driving by, you get to work, and then your boss decided to order lunch for everybody. No, it is not a salad. It is barbecue. It's barbecue with a side of bluebell ice cream. And then you begin to doubt. It's like, Lord God, I know you said that I would lose weight, but all this opportunity is before me. And that's, that's, how, it actually, that's how it actually is. And so you're, you're basically saying to yourself, within yourself, God, I know what you said to me, but all I see right now is that bluebell ice cream. And I think sometimes, sometimes in our life, God, and that was just a silly example, but God would tell us something in our life. And the very next day, things will start happening in our life that contradicts what God said. But God says, I want you to I want you to keep the faith. I want you to continually look to me just because he said I said it. And he reminds you, he re basically reminds you that, hey, I did say what I said and it's going to come to pass. You just have to keep the faith and not doubt. So we have to believe and we have to incline our ear to the things of God. The last part of this is to give thanks. Is to give thanks. I think there are a few things that we can do to actually grab God's attention. And one of them is giving thanks. Giving thanks. If, have you, I don't know if you've ever been, I'm sure it, if you haven't, you'll live life long enough, you, you will find yourself in this position before. But have you ever woke up and you just felt bad about everything? It seemed like everything was going wrong in your life. I mean, everything. You, you, you didn't get enough sleep. Look, she's about eight years old and she understands that already. And, and nothing is actually going right in your life, right? I challenge you when you're having a day like that, I challenge you to start giving God praise and not only just giving God praise, but but you can always find something to give God praise about. I want you to think about this. You can wake up and you can say, Lord, I don't have any money in my in my bank account. But guess what, God, I have I have two working arms. You can get up and say, you know what, I, 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 I may not I may not have the job that I want right now, but God, I'm in perfect health. There's people out there that's not perfect in perfect health. And let me tell you guys something. When you begin to look at things and find things in your life to give God praise about, that's when you get God's attention. Because let me tell you, when you begin to worship and when you begin to praise him, God will come down and he will come into your situation and he will encourage you. And not only that, he'll remind you of what he said all along. Give God praise. You have to give God praise. First Thessalonians 518 says in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Now, I'm going to read that again and I'm going to I'm going to make sure I have that this right. You guys help me if it's not. It says, let me see. In most things. No, it, uh, in in everything except your kids. No, I didn't say that anyway. No, it actually says in everything, 
in everything. What does everything mean? Everything means everything. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. In everything, we should be able to give God thanks because there's always something to give God thanks about. Always something. You, 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 I, don't, I don't care what's going on in your life. If, if, and sometimes, you know what I did? Sometimes there, there were some times where, I, like I said, I had one of those mornings where nothing seemed to go right. And all I could see is, is everything that was going wrong. You know what got me through? I start thinking about things that God had already done in my life. Meaning, so, so I, I, I want you to get this because this is very important because this happened in the Bible too many a times. David, right before he was about to face Goliath, little bitty old David, he was a young man and he was about, about to face this huge giant. And let me tell you what David's mindset was. David was not going by what he saw. I want you to understand this. Because David saw, he actually saw people get, uh, he actually saw people get defeated. He actually seen uh, um, warriors who, 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 who only job was to actually fight, run from Goliath. But see, David had a different mindset. David's mindset was not on what he seen at the moment. David's mindset was what God had already told him. When he was, when he was actually in the field, he, David's mindset was, you know what? I, I've already defeated the lion and the bear. Guess what? This is, this is nothing else to me because if I defeated the lion and the bear, I'm not even looking at what I'm seeing. If, I, if God was with me when I did that, God is going to be with me when I face Goliath. He wasn't focused on, 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 the, on the giant in front of him. He was focused on what God said. And when we go through times in our life that, like that, we have to be focused on what God said and not exactly what it looks like. What did God say to you? I already know what's in front of you, but what did God say? Psalms 9 verse 1. It says, I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous works. You have to praise him through those situations. You have to lift him up through those situations. Now, back to that David example really fast. I'm just about ready to close too. He said, David's mindset was, because I defeated and God was with me when I defeated the lion and the bear, God is going to deliver you to my hands. Talking to Goliath. I want you to see this. This is how God wants our faith to actually work. Okay. The video was talking about a mustard seed. And it said the mustard seed, you know, how small the mustard seed. Any seeds, and he, he used an incredible example because a seed is supposed to grow. Do you understand that your faith is supposed to grow? Your faith is supposed to grow. As you grow with God, your faith is supposed to grow. And so it, it was on display in David's life because first he started with the lion and the bear. And then he had Goliath. Even though the circumstances changed, even though the adversary was bigger than, than, than before, there was one constant in that. The constant in that is David was not looking at the situation using his natural eyes. David was listening to what God said, to what God said. We have to listen to what God said. Now, I gave you those scriptures earlier and I was highlighting when Jesus, it said when Jesus heard and then it said when the multitudes heard. I want you to take a look at this. And I'm closing about the fig tree that withered. Mark chapter 11, verse 12. It says, now the next day when they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry and seeing from afar a fig tree is talking about Jesus having leaves. He went to see if perhaps it would find something on it. So he went over to the fig tree. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves for it was for it, it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said, let no one eat from you ever again. He cursed the fig tree. And get this, guys. 
And his disciples heard, his disciples heard him say this. Verse 20, the next morning, it says, Now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter remembering, Peter remembered what Jesus said. And he says, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you curse has withered away. Jesus said to him, have faith in God. For surely I say unto you, whosoever shall say to that mountain, be moved and be cast into the sea. And does not doubt in his heart, but believe those things that he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Jesus has spoke it. And I want you to, I really want you to understand it. Jesus spoke it and the disciples heard it. Nothing happened to the fig tree at that very moment. I want you to think about this. What do you, what do you think the disciples thought? Jesus spoke, nothing happened. I'm sure they're like, well, what happened, Lord? What you said didn't take place. It didn't happen until the very next morning. What am I trying to say to you this morning? I don't care what God has said to you. I, it doesn't even, I don't even care. What, I don't care what God has promised to you. There's a lot of promises God has made in his word. And there's some promises God has made to you personally. It doesn't matter what. It doesn't matter what it looks like right now. All that matters is what God said to you. So I pose the question, can God do it again? Absolutely God can do it again. And guess what? God not only want to do it again, but he wants to supersede what he's already done before. Because he's a, he's a God that goes bigger and bigger and bigger. And let me tell you why. He does that so our faith will increase, so our faith will grow. I don't know where you find yourself out today. There's some of us, maybe you're like me. You're like, Lord, I remember what you said. I remember it, God, but what I'm seeing is not lining up to what you said. God says, keep the faith. Don't doubt in your heart. Keep the faith. Every eye closed, every head bowed. I want to pray with you this morning. If you have been doubting God, if you've been away from God, God wants you to remember and God wants you to have faith. Whatever that thing is, I want to pray with you this morning. But right before we pray, if you say, you know what, I'm away from God right now. I'm not living the life that I need to be. I'm not going to ask you to come up here. I just want you to raise your hand. Not that I can see you, but God can see you. Can you raise your hand? Raise your hand. Raise your hand if that's you. Raise your hand and slip it right back down. I see that hand. I see that hand. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you have said incredible things to us, God. And Lord, we know that you are a big God that's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think, Father. We know, Heavenly Father, that you are bigger, God, than whatever we're facing in our life. And Lord, I pray right now for somebody who's thinking about giving up, throwing in the towel, doubting, not believing and not trusting in you, Father. I pray right now, Father, that you, you, that you show them, God, what you said again, God. That they will remember, God, the goodness of the Lord. That they will remember, God, the things that you brought them from and set them free from. I thank you for that in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, I pray right now, Heavenly Father, that you not only do something big in our life, God, you do something that you've never done before. I know you can do it again, Father, but do something incredible that will blow our mind, God. And let us not doubt, but let us keep the faith. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Can you give God a hand clap this morning? Or better yet, can you give God thanks this morning? That's probably better. Can you give God thanks this morning?
We, we do thank you for being here with us here this morning. I do want to let you know if you are a first time visitor or if you just want to speak to our pastor, he'll be actually in the coffee corner um, directly after service. But we do want to invite you Wednesday night. We have an incredible time here for just about anybody. So if you don't have um, anywhere to go, or if you need a pick me up, definitely come in here on Wednesday. We thank you so much for being here. Make sure you say hello to your neighbor before you leave in Jesus name. Amen.